Africa stream has just got banned from YouTube and Meta, and I think Instagram too. Some things never change. And the only way for evil to win is for good people to say nothing. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Speak to the channel, like, subscribe, click that notification button. So when we get information out, you can get information in. Like African Stream getting banned. What's up with that? I'm sure we got facts. I'm sure we got proof on exactly why they did it. It couldn't just be because Anthony Blinken said so. <laughs> I mean, it could be because everybody believes Anthony Blinken. <laughs> An African stream has just been banned on YouTube and I believe Meta on Facebook. We have a problem, ladies and gentlemen. It seems like every time there's an election coming, this happens. Every time. It just never feels happens to my channel as well. But let's dive into this. Let's dive in because the freedom of speech is very, very important. Probably one of the greatest freedoms that we have. I mean, if not the most ultimate freedom that you have. RT also secretly runs the online platform African stream across a wide range of social media platforms. Now, according to the outlet's website, African stream is, and I quote, a pan-African digital media organization based exclusively on social media platforms, focusing on giving a voice to all Africans both at home and abroad. In reality, the only voice it gives is to Kremlin propagandists. I heard it from Blinken himself. Where's the proof? This is what I really hate. I hate it. Where is the proof that African Stream did this? That they were, I mean, propaganda. So you're allowed to pro have propaganda. It's fine. You can propaganda. Anybody can throw propaganda out there. It's, it's living. It's out there. But it, it's not illegal to have a specific view on something. Uh, I, they put this out there and expect us just to believe it. They be is that propaganda? How do we know? How do we not know that that's not the propaganda? That's not what is, is the lie. He says, oh, the truth is, how do we know? Because you said it was? Anthony Blinken? I, I don't think a lot of people agree with Anthony Blinken on many things. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that, oh, it's African Stream. I, think it, I, I don't, didn't know who they were until I saw a comment below on one of my other videos. And one of my subscribers said, I can't believe they, they banned African Stream. I was, I'm, Who's that? Who's African Stream? I know most of the major African channels. So I, I, I looked into it, and uh, yep, they were canceled. And we did our diligence and and uh, investigative journalism on on them. And uh, I, I don't care for a lot of their views. I disagree with a lot of things that they said. But uh, isn't that what we want? Isn't that what we want to be able to listen to people we disagree with? I can listen to people I agree with all day. Uh, I, I don't learn nothing from that. But when I hear views that are outside of mine, mine, my own, then um, I might not agree with it, but I, I get to listen to it and form an uh, uh, authentic thought, my own opinion on it. And I don't need the state telling me what opinion I can have and what opinion I can't. And uh, a different side of the spectrum. It's, I, I like seeing different sides of the spectrum. And right now, when people are silenced, you don't get to hear their side of the spectrum. And I agreed with a lot of their views. I was watching it. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. And they say some, some things out there. They're like, mm, yeah, well, you're, you're kind of pandering here a little there to your demographic. I get that. And they probably believed it was true. I don't know. Uh, but they seem like legitimate people. I, I, I could hang out with them. But... Um, this is what freedom of speech is. It's being able to have this dialect. It's being able to talk to each other and work out differences of opinion instead of just fighting about it and canceling it is the worst. It's, it's a vocal genocide to silence your voice, to silence your thoughts. And if everybody out there had realized that this message from front to back is packed with probably things that you've never heard or seen before, stories you've never heard or seen before. But once you catch it all, in the big picture, from front to back, I suggest you watch it through, throughout if you can, or save it and watch the rest of it later. But they tie in, and you'll understand by the end of this video exactly what's going on. At least I hope you do. I hope you enjoy. And thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, but I, 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 I do like the ability to disagree with others. I'm not going to make this a black and white thing. 
because in my opinion, it's not. Now you can choose not to listen to that. You can choose to listen to it. I agree to disagree with people and that, that's what makes our freedom of speech and freedom of choice so valuable that we can hear other thoughts and opinions on things. I believe that this is a human issue, not just a black issue or a white issue. It's a human issue. Um, and it, it's, it's about what it's authoritarian that they want to dictate it to the masses. It's not because they were black that, that this happened. It's because of what they said that this happened. If they were speaking, go America, go this, go colonialism, we were pushing for this, they, they wouldn't be canceled. That's just how I feel. It's, but for the media and the government to have control over individual views, it's the government that has control over it. They are the ones who push the media to pull it down or something could happen to their channel or their, their platform. So anyone against, anybody who was out there saying, yeah, cancel t Trump off of Twitter, get rid of him, get rid of him, get rid of him. He said this, he said that, he said this. Well, if cancel African view, African stream, they said this, they said that. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter what somebody says that makes it cancelable or not. You can agree whether it's right or wrong. That's why we're here. Because we have views that agree on things, whether they're right or whether they're wrong. But to say cancel it and cancel it, no, no, I, I, I don't agree with that. And, and I was reading that these, these guys, they, they don't like Elon Musk. <laughs> we don't like Elon Musk. He's a this and that and that. But you know what? They can go over to his platform because he bought it and he's not canceling people for their freedom of speech. So, you know, that's kind of a catch-22 on their part. It's ironic that they're having to use Rumble and Elon Musk, <laughs> two platforms that they hate. They're white conservative media outlets. Uh, but you know what? It's a voice for all. It's a voice for all, and that's what this is about. Now, now the Blinken had mentioned they are, what did he say? They are, Blinken said, RT secretly runs the online platform African Stream. I was like, what's RT? Never heard of it. Well, RT, who is it? Now, according to the court documents, RT, uh, formerly known as Russia Today, is a state-controlled media outlet funded and directed by the government of Russia. So if African Stream was receiving money from them, well, they, they may not have known it, for one. And uh, two, if they, didn't, if they did know, well, maybe that it was RT money. Maybe they weren't aware that social networks are obligated by law to shut them down. It's over. There is no coming back from that. I hate to say it. Well, now they know, and you know, and I know that this is a thing. I, I've never even heard of the RT, Russian, what was it, Russian television? Russian Today, Russia Today. I never heard of it until today. <laughs> I mean, we don't get funded for our media platform here by Russian, Russia TV, RT, or, I mean, monetized, that's about it. But we don't get individual private funding from anyone in this channel. But our views are our own. And I, I'm not going to be your propaganding for Russia. I, I, I have friends that are from Russia, and they're, they're, saying, they're so glad that they were able to get away from it. It's a, it's a poverty-ridden nation that holds their people down to, to, to that, to the system of government. And it's, they're not allowed to speak over there either freely. So I can't give a whole bunch of kudos to them. Uh, they're allowed to have their freedom of religion. I, I think their family values are, are, are good and all that. I, I, I love Russian people. But uh, as far as the communism, the, the socialist system that, the, that they have, I disagree with that 100%. And I would never want to be propaganda for Russia. Even though when it comes to a political world, what you do behind the scenes and doing for your countries, I, I think some countries are better dealing with Russia than with America in a lot of things. Now, will I get banned for that? I don't think so. I hope not, but, but let's go over a few of the things Anthony Blinken had said, okay? 
and we're going to read it. Wide range of social media platforms. Here was the response that they gave on TikTok, African Stream. They said they've been, African Stream has been viciously attacked and silenced by the greatest superpower in the world, the United States of America, on the basis of allegations emerging from Reddit rumors. Interesting. On Friday, Friday the 13th of September, I guess that's when this uh, statement came out, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said what he just said. Now they go on to say, less than 24 hours after this statement, our channel was taken off of YouTube. And less than 72 hours later, our pages were removed from Meta, that is, from Instagram, Facebook, and Threads. Across all four platforms, we had over 1.5 million followers. If we include TikTok and X, we have over 2.5 million followers. It's likely only, it is likely only a matter of time before we are removed from those platforms too. Is this democracy that the United States is always championing? Is the United States truly the beacon of democracy as it actively clamps down on free speech and freedom of the press, both enshrined in the United Nations 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, to which the United States is a signator. signatory. They had a lot of followers. They had a lot of followers. Now I tried contact. I've tried reaching. I just tried reaching out to them on X, and they're still up on X, and they haven't gotten back with me. Uh, it kind of leaves me kind of wondering. Well, a couple questions that I had for them were: <laughs> Did you know you were getting money from RT? That's a question that they really need to answer. Because if they did know that, they must not have known that that means that they, they're going to be canceled. I never knew that. It's so interesting. Um, you know, they accused Trump of this thing, too. They accused him of, uh, I don't know if it was RT that they had to deal with or whatever, but... And they go on to say, everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression... This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through um, any media regardless of frontiers. Apparently, these rules do not apply to anti-imperialist Africans living on the most exploited and plundered continent on Earth. No, it's the same rules here in the United States, just to let you know. I, I can't do it. You can't do it. I can't do it either. So, just to let you know, it's not about that. It's not. It's about the message. Period. Those are just my thoughts. To be clear, neither China, Russia, nor Iran taught us Africans about imperialism. We learned through our own body history, as victims and as survivors of slavery, colonialism, and imperialism, that history and our Pan-African heroes, many of whom, helped, whom the U.S. helped to assassinate or overthrow, is why we are anti-imperialists. The irony is that most of them were also accused of being Russian assets. It wasn't Trump. <laughs> it wasn't, isn't it the Republican Party getting thrown at it? You're looking at all those YouTubers, those Russian YouTubers that, uh, that they say are Russian YouTubers that got kicked out. Uh, yeah, they accused them of being Russian assets as well. And pe the people were like, what? Anyway, Patrice Lumumba who was called a Soviet-linked African Castro by the director of the Central Intelligence Agency at the time, Alan Dules. Lumumba was also, after killed by the U.S. and Belgium-backed forces via firing squad on 17th of January 1961, with the mo most of his corpse then dissolved in acid and the rest burnt, leaving nothing but a single tooth that was buried on DR Congo's 62nd independence anniversary 61 years later. All conscious Africans know the, this history, and know how one of the greatest Pan-African leaders and thinkers, Kwame Nkrumah, was also accused of being a Soviet-linked communist shortly before he was overthrown 1966 coup d'etat by the CIA-backed National Libertarian Council, under whose supervision the country's economy was privatized. You know, it really sucks that this has happened to them. It really sucks. And I wonder if... I, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson did a... a, a a piece with uh, Ami Sharatio, I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, from the Uhuru Freedom House in St. Petersburg, Florida. And he uh, was talking about this, freedom of speech. And, and he was just, uh, that gentleman was just 
I'm going to give you a piece of that. Let me give you a piece of that real quick. Well, as you've just heard, the Biden administration spends an awful lot of time covering up actual crimes, crimes committed by their political allies and their relatives. But for their critics, there is no such mercy. For the first time in our history, the government has begun to arrest people for saying things the White House doesn't like. That's the end of the First Amendment. Speech that's been protected for centuries in the United States is no longer protected. It's now a criminal act. We've told you about the grotesquely unconstitutional prosecution and then conviction of Douglas Mackey. The DOJ is trying to send Mackey to prison for a decade for making fun of Hillary Clinton's voters on Twitter. The media barely report the story. They don't seem to care at all. They seem to endorse it. No one in Congress has meaningfully pushed back against it. So this trend continues. The latest group of Americans to find their constitutionally protected opinions become felonies are, believe it or not, an organization of black nationalist left-wingers who oppose the war in Ukraine. The DOJ has just charged many in this group with seeking to, quote, sow discord, spread pro-Russia propaganda, and interfere in elections within the United States. Now, there's no evidence they interfere with any election. You're allowed to be pro-Russia. You're allowed to be pro-anything you want in the United States. Saying things the government doesn't like, having unfashionable opinions or opinions that are out of step with Joe Biden's opinions, that is not a crime. You can spread pro-Russia propaganda if you want to. You can spread anti-Russia propaganda if you want to. You can say whatever you want, but not anymore. According to the indictment, the criminals in question, quote, wrote articles that contained Russian propaganda and disinformation. Huh? They also gave speeches and posted videos that annoyed the State Department. Here's one of them. This is an ongoing aggression. It did not just start. It's all, it's been going on for a while, but the U.S. government uh, uh, relies on the ignorance of, uh, of the people uh, in this country and much of the world that's facilitated by people like Zuckerberg. So for whatever it's worth, we're not really sure who that guy is. We know he's American. Pretty sure that on a lot of issues, we likely would not agree with him. A lot of what he just said in that video seems to be true. But even if it weren't true, even if he was wrong, it would still be constitutionally protected speech. In a free country, which we had until recently, you are allowed by definition to have dumb opinions. Most of us do, but not anymore. So that man you just saw is facing 10 years behind bars for expressing views about Ukraine that the Biden administration doesn't want to hear. That's terrifying. Does no one else think that's terrifying? It is terrifying. And to that man's credit, whoever he is, he saw it coming. Here he is at a rally last month. They have declared that black people are so stupid that it takes Russians to tell us that we are oppressed. I have never known a moment of black freedom for my entire life. I have never read of a moment since the beginning of a colonial mode of production where black people have been free. And yet they are saying that we are working, we are agents of some foreign power because we say black people must be free. Okay, again, we're not defending that guy because we agree with all of his views. We probably don't. That is totally irrelevant. Whether you agree with what someone is saying has nothing to do with his right to say it. Americans are allowed to say what they think is true, period. If they take that right away, you are no longer a citizen, you are a slave. Now, as many of you all know, uh, Tucker Carlson got canned. He got kicked out of fo off of Fox for his uh, January 6th belief. Um, he ended up getting this guy on his program. And it was an hour and a half, maybe two hours long. It was great. The guy was, he, he, got, he got literally uh, stormed by the feds. And uh, he had just gone to court, I believe, last week. Um, this happened a couple years ago. He just went to court last week and was found guilty, not for what they, not the major charges, but a couple of minor things. But um, his interview with Tucker Carlson, it sounds a lot like, I mean, 100%. I, I agree with him on most all of it. But uh, I'm going to let you hear that. And it sounds like exactly what African Stream is going through, only they're in another country, or maybe they'd be behind bars here in the United States. I don't know. You tell me, but here's that episode. Let me know what you think. 
uh, by law that we're supposed to have rights, but in fact, these rights don't exist. And what I have done and what our organization has done is move from this simpering kind of a politic that's based on, on pleading and begging and trying to uh, come into the system based uh, on some assumption that the contradiction is racism or the ideas or the opinions that white people have about black people, what I have done and said, that's not the fundamental contradiction. The fundamental contradiction is colonialism. It's domestic colonialism. And it applies right here in this country where foreign and alien power kidnapped me that somebody like to talk about this country being uh, a country of, how do they call it, uh, uh, immigrants. But we're not immigrants. <laughs> we were captives and, and, and brought here in chains. And, and the only group other than the indigenous people themselves who didn't come here looking for a better way of life. I, people may or may not like what I'm saying or agree with it, and that's all right. Uh, I, but I, I'm seeing it, and the point is the United States government attacked me, and they used uh, this assault uh, with the assumption that there are a lot of white people who don't like what I'm saying and therefore will agree uh, with the, what the government is doing despite the fact there are no facts to substantiate what they're claiming that we did. And so this is the kind of public opinion that they think will weigh in their favor. But the, the, the point is that the Second Amendment and the constitutional rights, free speech, freedom of assembly, protection from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, what is it called, this attack on, on illegal search and seizure, this was done for groups of people who had left England and left other places and left the despotism of kings and things like that and, and wanted to have some rights. And so they made these rights. Uh, but these rights also were given to them on indigenous land uh, uh, where black people you know, had done much of the, the, the work to, to build on this land, et cetera. They were not for us. It was only a bloody struggle that black people were embalmed in, where our churches were bombed, leaders assassinated, just for trying to join Joe Biden's party. And, uh, 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 and, and so now we're at this place where they are coming at the at Second Amendment rights that were not made for me, but were made for white people. And just to let you know, we're going to get back into the African stream ban as soon as this is, as soon as you hear what this gentleman says, because it kind of fits the same narrative. Let me know what you think. May I ask you a question, though? Yeah. Yeah. So, but this is being done by the administration that tells us constantly how much they love and worship black people. They love black people. No one's ever done more for black people than the Biden administration. And no one has has cheered that on more loudly than the New York Times and the Washington Post, which also love black people probably a lot more than you do. So have they come to your defense at all? Like any of these? Not at all. Yeah. Why? That's kind of weird. No, and it's, it, it's really, it's a, a real serious kind of contradiction uh, that this is uh, able to occur. And especially, you know, I mean, we talk about Biden, if we just take it on a personal level, which is not necessarily where I was intending to go, but if you take it just on a personal level, we're talking about Biden, uh, who claims to be the great liberal, who a white man who loves us. We're talking also about the guy who was opposed uh, to the civil rights bill. Uh, talking about the guy who was opposed to busing because he didn't want his children to have to go to school in a jungle, uh, et, et cetera, just, just on a personal level. And, uh, but here, they have never had to, had to offer African people anything. When they run for office, it's not because they're offering us anything. They are frightening black people. They say, if you don't vote for us, you're going to get Trump who is a demon, or you're gonna get the Republicans who are demons, or you're gonna get what we characterize as fascism, et cetera. So they don't have to promise black people anything, except they swear they'll, 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 they'll protect us from, from the other white people. That's one aspect of it. And then there's a whole body of folk who are employed through uh, things like welfare, slavery, and programs that they create uh, in, uh, it's a whole array of folk that employ liberals based on that. And what we stand for is self-determination. Uh, we also believe in reparation, but the point is that we have in St. Louis alone, we have in seven contiguous blocks in St. Louis, economically depressed sector, we, we purchased something like 20 some odd uh, uh, properties and we put businesses and other kinds of things there. That's not permissible. We are supposed to get in line 
for welfare or something like that. And we are teaching African people that you can be self-determining. There is an alternative to what you got. But the whole Democratic Party apparatus rests upon this foundation of welfare slavery. And this is where they would have black people uh, uh, located. And so our the Democratic Party, you can't say uh, that they lied to us, whether it was Obama or whether it was uh, this guy, uh, uh, Biden. You can't say they lied to us because they didn't promise us anything, except they would protect us from Trump, uh, from the Republican Party. From and I'm not a Trump uh, person or a Republican person. I'm, I'm for the liberation of black people. And that's why this whole thing about working for Russians is so ridiculous. I'm not looking for another master. Uh, uh, I'm trying to get rid of the whole relationship that presupposes uh, that we will be servant, uh, servants of anybody. I mean, given that you haven't actually done anything, you're not accused of doing anything that isn't already legal, exercising rights that are guaranteed to you from birth till death under the U.S. Constitution, I'm a little bit surprised that nobody has defended you in the US media. Now, I will say your name sounds non-mainstream of your organization, but once you so learn- like Obama. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Fair, fair, <laughs> Barack Hussein Obama. But once, but once you learn the details of this, you'd think there would be at least one civil libertarian at the New York Times editorial page or the Washington Post or NBC News or CNN or any of these groups. Has anybody, said a word about an armored personnel carrier showing up at your house for for speaking, for talking. No, we've had to go out and really uh, work. I mean, in July of uh, uh, this year, we had uh, a meeting, a conference, and we pulled together something like 40 different organizations and what have you to unite uh, as a part of a free speech, uh, uh, anti-colonial free speech movement who are pushing back on this. And I think that includes uh, uh, one uh, organization of lawyers and what have you. But generally speaking, we haven't been able to get anything, even so-called progressive black politicians and what have you have not stepped forward. So it wasn't about racism. And I agree with him, it's not about racism. It's about colonialism. And here's where the attacks of free speech come in and they accuse the Biden administration, it's the feds, the federal depart department, it's the deep state in all of this that's doing it. Biden probably had nothing to do with it, but he is part of it. Um, but when you look at that and then you look at people like Donald Trump who want to disband the FBI, he wants to disband NATO, and he wants to do these things that it's on the same mindset. It's the same mind frame as is what is happening to them is the same thing that's happening to Donald Trump. So it, that's why I feel like this is not a, a racist thing. It's a colonialist uh, regime. It's a that's how I feel about it. The U.S. State Department, the entire government and intelligence apparatus know deep down that we are not acting out Russian interests, but out of the African interests. After failing to criminalize freedom minded Africans under unsuccessful black identity extremist label established in FBI 2017, U.S. representatives have resorted to another tool in their arsenal, racist patronization. They want the world to believe we Africans cannot think for ourselves, make our own decisions, and promote our own interests. They want you to believe that we must always have a boss, overlord, or a master dictating to us how we must act and think and what we must say and do. I totally agree. I totally agree with them on that. Our government officials, yes, the deep state. You're absolutely right. That's how they feel. That's what they're doing. That's why the NATO or UN Security Council is letting two African countries have seats in it, but they're not giving them any veto power. What's that? That's exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> but yeah, you're absolutely right there. See, we can agree to disagree and we can agree on some things and maybe not on all, but we can work those other things out through conversation, through this, through freedom of speech. Uh, today we have, today they have chosen Russia as the alleged master that controls us. They cannot come out and say that they are targeting Africans because we are diametrically opposed to imperialist interests in Africa. So they depict us as servants of the Kremlin. Now they do that to, see, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. I, I believe that, that um, today they've chosen Russia as the alleged master that, to con that's controlling you. I believe that. Um, they cannot come out and say that 
they are targeting Africans because we are diametrically opposed. I don't believe they're just targeting, they're not. They're not just targeting Africans. They're targeting everyone, everyone, everywhere that has a different opinion than them, that has, shares your opinion on these things. But it's not about the color that shares the opinion, it's about the opinion. I can't share that opinion without being booted, or I can't deal with the RT without being booted. And that's when I don't like when they use the black card. I don't like that. I would rather them use the rights card, the, the, the issues, the real issues here, or we're never going to get anywhere. Those are just my thoughts. They cannot see Africans as anything other than slaves. Recently, three members of the Pan-African Organization, African People's Socialist Party, were charged with being Russian agents. They were acquitted, but await sentencing for conspiracy charges on the plantation. On the plantation, rebellious Africans were always whipped and beaten to serve as an example to others. They call the Democratic Party the plantation. And I agree. On the plantation, yeah. If you're in that party, you're on the plantation. And they just keep on like a frog being boiled. They don't know it's being boiled, and they keep on doing the same thing. They jump right back in the pot. This is nothing new. It's just a Red Scare 2.0 with with a new Russian boogeyman and the same old target, Pan-Africanists. Freedom-loving Americans or freedom-loving Africans have always been attacked by the U.S. state apparatus. That's true. The greatest, in my in my thought, the greatest nightmare to the imperialist system is an organized Africans forming international connections, able to reach other Africans and oppress people around the world. That I agree, 100%. This is why Paul Robertson's U.S. passport was revoked in 1950, and why the W.E.B.U. Du Bois passport was revoked in 51. This is why Claude Jones was deported in the United States in 1955, and why Marcus Garvey was deported in the earliest 1927. Let us not forget that Marcus Garvey and his, his Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA, organization ran the most successful and widespread pan-African media publication of the early 20th century, Negro World. We Need we remind you how Africans around the world had to smuggle in secret copies of Negro World so that Africans could read the journal? I didn't know that, but I, yeah, I could see that happening back then. As it is kind of like right now, you're right, it, it's painting a very good picture here. As in the case of Garvey, Lumumba, and Nkrumah, the smear always came before the action to remove them from power. That's how they work. Yeah, absolutely. Smear them, then remove them. Smear them, then remove them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It sounds kind of like somebody I know. Uh, it sounds like a president, a former president I know. Smear them, then remove them. But a lot of people believe the smears. That's the problem. Everyone wants to believe certain smears, but then when they see the person removed and they, they realize, hey, things aren't really much better, maybe that smear wasn't all it said. In, like in the Iraq war. Oh, smear Saddam Hussein. Smear Saddam Hussein. He's the one who did it. So they smeared him. Then they went over there and killed him. And then 40 years, 30 years, 20 years later, 21 years later, they come out and say, oh, well, I, I don't think that he had anything to do with them. It was uh, Osama bin Laden, not, a, not Saddam Hussein. We just got the, we smeared, smeared, smeared. Cancel. That's it. You're absolutely right. And it's not about just blacks. It's look at Gaddafi. Look at, I mean, they got to smear you first. That's exactly, you're 100% on that. They did it to Donald Trump. Smear, smear, smear. Later. Anyway, first they smeared the biggest. Uh, this is what happened to African Stream. First, they smeared us on the biggest stage possible, and then their intelligence agencies contacted YouTube and Meta to remove our platforms, that we are reaching an average of 20 million people every week. Why? Because we have an analysis that is not approved by the U.S. State Department. Is the so-called greatest democracy in the world really that insecure that a bunch of 20- and 30-year-old Africans can expose their whole strategy in Africa? We must say we are extremely flattered. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Is it worth stating that this came soon after we debunked U.S. state-backed media publication Voices of America, a tack piece on us titled African Stream Distorts U.S. Military's Mission in Somalia? In this article, they claimed AFRICOM had only killed three to five civilians in Somalia. We were able to demonstrate categorically that it's simply not true. Perhaps that was the final nail in the coffin. If it was, we have absolutely no regrets. Or maybe it was our coverage of the revolutions happening in the Sahel at the moment, principally Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. 
I have done coverage on that as well. Uh, maybe we posted too many videos of people in the streets of those countries celebrating after French troops were kicked out. No, I've posted that as well, and that's posted on thousands of, out <coughs> of outlets. But did they receive money from the RT? That's the, that's the common denominator here. We all, we all and, and what they're doing is not Russian propaganda there. That's not Russian propaganda. That's just media facts. Um, so I don't think that that was it. I think they might be stretching it here. And I, I don't want to see them stretch it into a point that doesn't make sense for them to move forward. But we also extensively covered Niger kicking out American troops, which is unprecedented in the history of the continent. Yeah, that was, uh, that was something. And, and, and Russia went in, has gone in and done a much better job than, than the United States. Again, we have absolutely no regrets. We have never taken our lead from any state and definitely not a non-African state. We have always followed the voices of the grassroots in, the, in any country. If people hadn't come out in their masses in Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, we would have never reported on coups positively. We mirror the people's sentiments on the ground, which is why we became so popular in such a short period of time, in less than two years. That was a, an amazing movement that happened over there. And, uh, and uh, boy, Traore is just an, uh, uh, he's turning into a great figure for that nation. When Russian Senator Dmitry uh, Rogozin put out a racist tweet where he compared African-American U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin to a monkey, we condemned him and the Russian state for its lack of condemnation. We also called out the Russian Wagner Group for their support of the genocidal Sudanese par paramilitary group, the Rapid Support Forces RSF, at the start of that Susan Sudanese war. However, we have reported relatively positively about Russia involvement in the Sahelian states of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. Our reporting has found an overwhelming of pragmatic sentiment expressed by the people in those countries regarding Russia's role in helping to defeat terrorist threats, which only seemed to worsen after French and U.S. troops entered the fray. That's true. It wasn't African Stream that placed Russian flags in the hands of protesters rallying in the streets in support of the military coups, which soon led to the forced exit of French and U.S. troops. Yes, it did. Therefore, we make no apologies about forming our own analysis regarding situations that affect Africans globally. We are free and independent Africans who are entitled to our own opinions and report on what we want, how we want the African people whose voices we amplify tell us when we get it wrong. Not Anthony Blinken, Kamala Harris, Donald Trump, Emmanuel Macron, or any imperialist leader. Good for you. Good for you. You have shut us down because of false claims that we are Kremlin propagandists, when in reality we have platformed a pan-African and anti-imperialist perspective that will not be silenced. Good for you. Good for you. As Fred Hampton famously said, you can kill a revolutionary, but you can never kill a, the revolution. And that's what Africa's going in right now. It's, have, it's a revolution, and it's working, and it's moving Africa forward. That's why I think that this is happening, too. Also, the RT thing is... The, the, just the, the that's the bait. The bait is the RT. Maybe the RT is run. Just an opinion uh, I have. Just a uh, just thinking out loud as I'm reading this. Maybe the RT is run by the United States, and then they use it to shut down people who actually just have opinions that they don't like. Maybe there's a separate RT company LLC that they formed so that they can shut down, shut you down whenever they want to. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, I'm just thinking out loud. That's just a conspiracy theory. You know, six months later, they find it to be true. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to investigate in that. But yeah, first and foremost, thank you. Without you, we would not have been able to tell our stories or get the attention of the U.S. empire. Secondly, if you want to support us, please do the following. Write to Instagram, blah, blah, blah. To go to Patreon. I would just go to X or something like that if you were wanting to follow them. But I just wanted to get this out there because... Uh, we, we, we see it. it, it's out there, it's happening, and it's election time, ladies and gentlemen, so, you know, get rid of those, that, anybody that has a, a, a different thought than another person, even though I disagree with many things they say, I agree 100% that they should not be taken down from a platform for the views that they have, even if I don't agree with them. That is the point here that I'm trying to make here. 
we've got to learn to agree to disagree so that we can have conversations. I would like to have a conversation with them so I can talk to them about certain things. So we can at least understand each other with the things that we don't agree with. At least I understand, I understand where he's coming from, 100%. Understand him? Yes, yes. Agree with all of it? No, I don't have to. And I can speak my mind on why I don't and where I don't so that they can kind of understand where I'm coming from. Just as, and they don't, you know, so people don't have to go around, oh, you're a racist, you're this, you're that. No, it, it's not about that. It's about just different theologies on different things. Your Muslims can get along with Christians. They, they do. And everybody can get along, even ha forming different opinions. But if it's not controllable, and that's what this, I think, the 100%, 100% is right. This is about control. I don't think it's about just control of the African people, even though that has been a huge, it's now it is about, it. that's been huge. And it's always been there and it will, it's going away. And that's what they don't like is they're losing the, the, the United States and France and the West is a losing that control. So how do they get it back? By doing things like this, taking away the voice, taking away the voices of the people actually know what's going on and wanted to share it or at least we believe we know what's going on we believe it to be right does that make us wrong or, or bad no it might make us wrong on certain things but I think they're right on more than they're, they're wrong on and those things that I think they're wrong on they might be right on and I might be wrong on I, I I'm okay with that I'm okay with that I know how God made me I'm not Jesus I'm not God I'm not perfect <laughs> and neither are you your skin color doesn't make you perfect, whether you're black, some black power, you know, that doesn't make you more powerful. White doesn't make you more powerful. None of that does. It's not about our skin color. So I'm not about any of that. I'm more just about people power, human power. God's, God designed us all in, in a unique way. So I, I believe that's powerful enough that my God knows how to make me the most powerful he can make me. He didn't do it by making me black. He did it by making me white made you most powerful by who you, who you could be by making you black or brown or yellow. It, God did this all for a reason. He's not schizophrenic. He doesn't make mistakes and wish he would have did it differently. We do. We make the mistakes and we end up blaming him for it, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, I would just like to say a uh, shout out to African Stream out there. Uh, my heart goes out to you. It really does. I, I disagree with it 100%. Um, but you know, these are the powers that the struggle that we're up against as the world tries to, uh, tries to form its way out of it. I think there are more for you. I know there are more for you than against you, but, uh, apparently when, like you said, it is the greatest superpower in the world and they have their ways and means of doing things, even though it doesn't make them right. It makes them even, you know, it, it makes them obvious. It actually just shines a light on their on what they're doing and it, it to me I understand that America doesn't want Russian propaganda in its atmosphere where people will all be you know wanting to change it into a socialist country which I hope it never happens but it's to me that's my opinion but I don't think it should be negated or taken away from anybody who may have a different opinion than I do and uh, Hopefully we can still get along. Hopefully we can all still be friends. And uh, I love you all with the agape love that the Lord uh, gave me and I want to share with you. Uh, hopefully this message comes around and uh, we'll get more out on this as, as the time goes by. And uh, God bless you all. It's good talking with you and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. One love.